Today we're going to discuss how to overcome fear. Last week we discussed the definition of fear. Tonight, I want to talk about how to overcome fear. I can't tell you how many times I've spoken to people and they've said that they want to eliminate fear from their lives. They want to have no fear. And the reality is that's not going to happen. Fear is a part of our makeup. You know, there's different schools of thought that fear is learned, but it is a tool. It does prevent us from doing things that can be very dangerous, very harmful, life-ending. So eliminating fear probably is not the best idea, but learning how to overcome it is. Now, how do you overcome fear? Well, the first thing is to decide. You know, after you've isolated a fear, you've identified it, and you said, you know what, I have a fear of intimacy. And you've looked at it and you go, is that fear of intimacy because of a bad relationship that I had in the past? Or is it because I don't know how to get to that level of intimacy with somebody? You then have a decision you can make. Do you want to learn? Do you want to overcome that fear? There are times that facing the fear is not going to help you grow. It's not going to help you improve your quality of life. And it may not be worth it to face that fear may just be better to invest your time dealing with a different fear. But once you've decided that this is something you need to overcome, this is something you're going to benefit by overcoming, then it's time to commit to doing it. And usually when we have fear, we'll start coming up with all sorts of excuses of why not to face it. But ask yourself this question, if I do learn how to overcome this fear, is it going to improve the quality of my life? If the answer is yes, face it. Take the steps you need to take. Make the decision that you are going to face it. Make the commitment. Now, the difference between a decision and a commitment is how willing you are to take action. When you've committed, it moves you forward. Now, the sad part is that over time, many of us have gotten used to not keeping our commitments. We've overcommitted ourselves so much, as we've talked about in other episodes, that when we commit, we're kind of even, I don't know, uncertain on our commitment. So a tool that I've learned over time that helps me keep my commitments is doing what's called a public commitment, making that commitment to others. It doesn't have to be standing in a room full of people. It can be finding one person that you can say, Hey, Jerry, I plan on doing this. I'm committed to facing this fear. I'm committed to taking these steps. And I know that you care about me as a friend, and I'm asking you to hold me accountable. Make sure that I do. Don't let me use excuses. Don't let me waffle on it. Please hold me accountable. Find one person. Or for others who think that they need a lot of leverage, you can. Post it on your blog. Tell it to everybody in your family. Say it in a room full of people. I just like to make sure to find people who are going to support me in fulfilling that commitment when I do it. After you've made the commitment and you've gotten someone who's going to hold you accountable, the next part is for many people the hardest, but it's also the magic pill. Take the first step. Have you ever had an experience in the past that something scared you to death? And then after you did it, you're like, it was nothing. After you take that first step, the second, the third, the fourth, moving to completion becomes so much easier. The fear is an imaginary wall that prevents us from taking that first step many times. Again, you're not going to eliminate fear from your life. And there's going to be times when you've done this experience before, and you're coming up to it again, and you get scared again. As an example, every time that Jerry and I make the commitment that we're going to get together and film, about five to six hours before we're supposed to meet, I start feeling that fear build up. 
And it's a mixture of fears. You know, there's immediate fears of, am I going to be able to deliver the material the way that I need to deliver it? There's the fear of, do I even know the material that I want to deliver? There's long-term fears. There's fears of, how are people going to accept it? Is it going to live up to the expectations that I have? Is it going to give value? There's fears from the past of times that I've gotten on stage and totally forgotten what I was going to say. There's just a whole big ball of fears that's there. And there's sometimes that fear gets so bad that I actually want to call Jerry and cancel, make up an excuse and reschedule for some other time. But I've made the commitment to him that we're going to get together. I know that he's adjusted his schedule to get together and meet. We've made the commitment to you, the people who are watching these videos, that for this series, we are going to release a new episode every week. So I've got that leverage on myself to follow through and to face that fear and to push through. So I take the next step. I prepare for the shoot that night. Fear, it's there. It's going to be there. Use it as an advisor to help you move forward and achieve the things that you want to achieve, to live the life you desire. So just really quickly, the exercise for this week, if you've identified a fear from last week's episode, pick one of those. We, ought, we suggested you pick five, but pick one and decide, is this a fear that you need to face? Will your quality of life improve by facing this fear, by overcoming it? If the answer is yes, commit right now. Commit that you are going to do what it takes to overcome this fear. And then find at least one person who you know cares about you, who wants to support you in your growth, and get them to hold you accountable. Let's make an example that you want to get involved in a relationship. So your commitment for this week is you're going to ask at least one person out on a date. If you're adventurous, ask three. But if you've been struggling, ask at least one. And your commitment is you're going to find that one person who does want to support you and you're going to say, look, by this time next week, I want to check in with you. Or if you haven't heard from me, check in with me and make sure that I asked someone out on a date this week. And after you've gotten that person who's going to hold you accountable, take the first step. Now, the first step does not have to be getting on the phone and calling somebody and asking them out. The first step can be isolating who it is you want to ask out. Is there someone that you know that you've been wanting to ask out that you have been too scared to ask out? Write it down. And if there's nobody that you have in your circle of friends right now that you have that interest in, maybe your first step is to write down places that you could go and find a potential partner. What are places that you would go to that people have common interests, that people would be compatible? Could it be a bookstore? Could it be a church? Could it be a bar? What is a place that you're going to find somebody that you align with? Take the first step, having made that commitment. Maybe you'll need to make another commitment to that person for them to hold you accountable to keep you moving forward. Again, this is all about how to overcome fear. People want a magic pill. Here's the magic pill. Take the first step. I look forward to your feedback. I look forward to connecting again soon. And take care. For a transcription of the video you just watched, more videos, and related articles, visit yourdailylifecoach.com. To comment on this video, select Discussion Forums on any page of our website.